get ready to know someone a little better. Who is this person? What makes them tick? Where are they from? See the many facets of the person. In their words, from our angles. My name is Eli and I'm a uh, full-time student. I grew up in Franklin, Pennsylvania, a small town north of Pittsburgh, hidden away in a valley, a uh, Victorian, beautiful little town. Everyone knows everyone. So I grew up uh, with two families. Uh, my parents separated when I was about eight and uh, both remarried. So growing up with two families uh, was difficult back and forth uh, week to week, even sometimes throughout the week to mom's house, to dad's house. So my family found out that I was gay um, around the time I was 14. My mom had found a journal that I kept under my bed and uh, confronted me one night about it, uh, where I had made comments uh, about seeing a boy at a museum that we were at and just feeling something different about him. I think I've always known that I was gay. Yeah. So as far as being gay in my household, it was something that we never really talked about um, until my parents found out that I was gay, or had those feelings at least. Um, and it's something that we grew into as a family. It was never a horrible, horrible pushed aside thing, but it was never truly spoken openly about for many years. So, uh, my first love, I met, uh, we were about 19, I think he was 20, and I had come home from school for a summer, and uh, we went on this cute little date on a train trestle and watched the sun rise, and from there I just thought that we would be together forever. So the relationship ended uh, when I went home, or back to school. And uh, I went out with some friends, met up with an ex, and it was right around my birthday, we had gone out, and as we were dancing and drinking and having a great time, uh, we, we kissed and he made a pass, and I uh, definitely went with it. It was about, I was about 24 years old um, when I noticed that I was slipping uh, into a really heavy addiction. I was drinking, late nights uh, and I would find new ways to engage to keep the party going so I had went from drinking to adding drugs like cocaine and crack to make things a little more exciting for myself to make myself bigger and more exciting to other people as well. As I slipped further into addiction um, I caught myself engaging in wild uh, sex parties that I couldn't even describe. Um, I found myself pawning items that I owned uh, to attain the drugs. Um, I found myself at one point selling myself um, to make this last, to keep it an exciting, exciting time for myself. Um, I watched myself spiral and spiral and spiral down this path that I couldn't find a way out of. It's awful. I, I remember one summer, I, uh, I met this guy at a bar, and uh, he was really exciting. I don't know what it was, but the second I laid eyes on him, I knew that I needed to be involved. And um, I remember being drugged four times that summer by this one person. Um, I truly don't know if there were ever an assault um, but I do know that we, we would definitely get drunk, um, and go back to his place, and the next thing I would know, I was on someone else's couch the next morning, and, uh, that was, that was terrifying, that was somewhere near the beginning of the end for me, um, I remember towards the end, there was a time where I went as far as oh, just 
directing these horrible scenarios um, and involving so many people, uh, and uh, it it led it led to that point in my life where I knew that I had to change or I was gonna die. As far as that point where I knew that I needed to change, I uh, had my front door kicked in uh, by another dude that uh, I owed, uh, who knows how much, something cheap. And um, he had kicked my door in and threatened my uh, partner at the time and my sister who were living with me. And I remember, I remember dropping to my knees and um, I just said, oh my God, something's got to, I don't know what to do. And uh, that was about the time that I, uh, I knew that rehab was probably the, the right choice. That's a tough one. Um, I don't think I've really thought about that ever. Uh, I mean, I was at the point where I had I swallowed a handful of Prozac and uh, washed it down with like half a liter of vodka. And I remember my mom had called and said, "What you know? What's going on with you?" And that I should pray. And I went through this moment of fuck, fuck God, and fuck everything you're talking about. Nothing can save me, and I don't want to be here. Um, and that was so so dark. And uh, I know that I came back to my life months later after rehab and I I knew that I was on a right path. It took three months until I was back to feeling okay within myself to even try life again. After going through treatment and uh, finding my way into sobriety, um, I actually met someone and uh, everything was awesome. Um, I was able to love myself and accept compliments, accept love, and uh, I thought I was on the right path, and uh, that took another little twist, and uh, found myself back in the party scene, drinking and having too much fun again, and uh, I knew this time that if I didn't change, I would die, and uh, that was a rough realization. I think shame and guilt took more of a hold this time um yeah so i went through one treatment facility um went through sober living uh that was where i thought i had everything and uh yeah i moved out on my own and uh i thought i had a good handle on it um, it wasn't until, I think after Christmas, I had a breakup, and uh, that was when the pandemic had started, and uh, life just hit me so quick, and uh, that was when I felt myself spiraling again, uh, and that was definitely, that's where the shame and that guilt took hold, and uh, so I decided that maybe changing where I was um, might help, being closer to family, um, connecting with other people, uh, especially other gay people that I'd never really been around other than through a party circuit um, and never really found myself associating with. Um, it was that love of a community that kind of brought me back to uh, a good place, yeah. The difference this time is that I did what I thought I should do, um, and that was to follow the suggestions um, of people in my uh, community. Um, I went through meetings, and uh, I sought counseling, and uh, started taking it easier on myself. That was, that's the difference now. As far as uh, what I did, right, um, I guess would be going to AA meetings, um, found myself a sponsor, I really beefed up my sober network and people I could actually rely on. That's the difference now. 
so that's okay that's i guess not hard to talk about or just like um let's see cravings um the desire to use and drink um those those come on but in time it gets easier uh to not i've uh yeah i know I, I have new ways of dealing with that um I know a lot of those feelings are like waves on an ocean and you just ride it. Everything ends. So the story with the tattoo, um, I spent nine months in recovery uh, from being paralyzed in the hospital. And uh, one of my best friends who did drink himself to death uh, awarded me a warrior because I had suffered enough that I was stronger than I thought. I would say to you who is struggling, never be afraid or ashamed to ask for help. Um, trust your gut. If it bothers you, talk about it. Uh, I, wish, I wish I had. Um, and if you're deep in it, it's never too late. Never too late to find that help. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you for supporting Keep Mojo Productions. Keep watching. Get on the YouTube channel. Enjoy. Thank you for supporting Keep Mojo Productions and Fast Lane. I was not there on that one. Um, keep uh, keep watching. Keep supporting. <laughs> Check out the YouTube right there. Do it again. Thank you for supporting. <laughs> All right.